In this tutorial, we're going to be deploying our e-commerce website to production and making our website live. But before we even get to that, I want to say a huge congratulations for persevering with this course and making it this far. Now, the purposes of this course was really two things. The first was to help you build a professional e-commerce website for your business to help you start selling online. And the second was to introduce you to a real world application, a complete React Redux ecosystem that you can add to your portfolio to show potential employers and help you get a job in the industry. You can find my official YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash simple tut, not only to find uh, my other videos, but also the official playlist for this series which again, you can, you can find by either visiting my YouTube channel or by clicking the link I'll be sharing in the description of this video. You can also find the official GitHub repository uh, for this project on my GitHub account, which is github.com forward slash simple tut. Again, I'll be sharing a link in the description of this video. And of course, you can also find my official website at simpletut.com, not only to view my other courses, but you can actually enroll in those courses and then actually track your process through your personal account. But as always, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on those notifications. Now, before we actually get started, I want to talk to you about how I'm going to deploy the application. So in this video, I'm going to be using Firebase hosting, right? So this is a tab within our Firebase console that we've not looked at yet. Uh, but of course, we're going to be using in this tutorial. But before we actually do that, I want to just mention that at the end of the day, we are using Create React App. And Create React App is basically a static site generator, right? So when we actually run the build command on Create React App, it will output a build folder. And this build folder is basically just JavaScript and HTML and CSS and all of our other assets bundled into a folder. It is a static site. It's a bunch of HTML files. We can actually deploy uh, the build from Create React app anywhere. We could even deploy it on a PHP Apache server because it is just HTML files. To get your production API keys from your Stripe account, you're going to need to come over to your Stripe dashboard. And the first thing you're going to need to do is activate your account, of course, if you haven't done already. So to do that, you're going to need to click on activate your account from the left sidebar. And once you click on that, it's just going to take you over to a form where Stripe is just going to ask you to fill out some basic information about your business. And then once you submit that, Stripe will process that information and activate your account. Now, the reason you have to activate your account is because uh, Stripe will not allow you to get your production keys and actually start processing payments until your account is activated. Uh, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, what you're going to need to do once you have activated your account is exactly the same, right? So you're going to need to come back into your account dashboard go to developers, API keys. And what you're going to see here is that your, your publishable and your secret key, they're still your test API keys, right? So these are the same keys that we're currently using in our application right now. And you can see up here, it also says test data. So that's just their way of making it super clear that you're currently in development mode. So to switch this over to production mode and get your production API keys, all you have to do is toggle this switch. So once you click this, it will toggle your account into production mode. And these API keys in the exact same places will start to display your production API keys, right? But remember, you need to activate your account first. So what you're going to need to do is once you've done that is just copy your publishable and your secret production keys, and then head back over to uh, our VS Code in our application because we're going to need to switch those keys within our project, right? So to do that, I'm going to assume that you've copied those production keys. Um, all you need to do is first of all, update your secret key. So we're using our Stripe's secret key within our Firebase function. 
So to do that, we need to expand our Firebase Functions folder, go into index.js, and you're going to need to update your uh, API key in this file. So again, this is where we're using the, the uh, secret key. You're going to need to update that key here. So make sure you update that and save those changes. We're going to have to redeploy this, this, this Firebase function. But before we do, let's just update our publishable key. And to update that, you need to go into your source folder, into the Stripe folder and config.js. And here we've created a constant uh, uh, called publishable key. And you're just going to need to update the value of this variable. OK, so before we try to deploy our Firebase function or even deploy our Firebase website using Firebase hosting, um, it's really important that we are trying to deploy our functions and our website using the correct version of Node. So what I want to do is I just want to quickly come back over to VS Code and we're going to go into our functions folder and you'll see that within this we have our package JSON which relates to our Firebase function and within this we have specified the engine that we want to deploy um, our Firebase function using. Now currently the version of the Firebase CLI that Firebase tools CLI that I have when I actually create and configure Firebase functions it automatically um, spits out node version 8 here. Now again, if I come back over to the browser, you'll see that Firebase themselves are changing their plans um, from the 15th of February 2021. Node.js is uh, deprecated and you will no longer be able to deploy Firebase functions using Node.js version 8. So to fix this, all you need to do is come back over to VS Code and make sure that the engine that you're specifying here is not version 8. Instead, you need to make that version 10. And that will allow you to deploy your Firebase functions um, uh, post, if I come back over here, uh, after this date, which is uh, from uh, uh, the 15th of February 2021. Now, something that's really important to be aware of is that unfortunately Firebase are also making some changes to their, their plans. Uh, you will no longer be able to deploy Firebase functions uh, on the free Spark plan. So you will need to upgrade your plan at the same time to the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan. But the good news is, and something that I've explained in previous tutorials, is that even though this is now going to be the Blaze pay-as-you-go plan, um, it still includes all of the free usage that you would have received in the Spark plan. So although you will need to enter your payment details and upgrade your plan, as long as you don't go over those usage limits of the free Spark plan, you're still not going to be required to pay anything. Okay, so now that we have actually switched our API keys, we need to redeploy our Firebase function. Now, we've already gone over this in a previous tutorial, so if you want to know more about deploying Firebase functions, then please reference that tutorial in this series. I'll link to that in the description of the video. Um, so I will kind of rush through this, but because, of course, I am assuming that you're familiar with this already. But to deploy our Firebase function, of course, our function lives within our functions folder. That sits outside of our source folder within our project directory. And this is a uh, project in itself. It has its own package JSON file, which is very important. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But the first thing we need to do is open up a new terminal window. I'm going to be using the terminal window built into VS Code. But I need to make sure I'm within my functions directory. So I'll just say CD functions. And as you can see, I've switched into that directory. And then, of course, I need to make sure that I have uh, Firebase tools installed. Now, if you haven't installed Firebase tools, you just need to run this very simple command. It's going to install it globally on your machine. So we just need to install um, uh, Firebase tools. Now, I already have this installed on my machine, so I don't need to do that. Um, but I do need to make sure that I am logged into my account. 
So to do that, we just do uh, Firebase login. And when I do that, it's going to take a few seconds. But as you can see, the message, the message that I'm prompted with that I'm already logged into my account. So if you haven't signed into your account within the terminal and Firebase tools, then please make sure that you do. Uh, and again, it's just Firebase login, and then you'll be prompted to enter your uh, email and password. So now that you've done that, we are ready to deploy our Firebase function. So all we have to do is Firebase deploy. And there you go. As you can see, I get this uh, confirmation message, uh, deploy complete. So I have successfully deployed my Firebase function. I do just want to flag here that I have assumed that you followed the video in this series related to Firebase functions. If you are unfamiliar with anything, if you want to go over it again uh, related to how to work with or deploy your Firebase function, please go back to this video tutorial earlier from earlier in this series about Firebase functions. I go into a lot more detail um, and explain everything that you need to know. Okay, so now that we have successfully deployed our Firebase function, we need to go ahead and we need to get the URL to uh, our live uh, API. So to do that, we just need to come back over to our Firebase console, go into our Functions tab, and then click on our API here. And all we need to do is copy this HTTP request URL, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that URL. And then we can come back over to our application, right? And go into our source folder, go into utils and index. And within this file, we have created our API instance. Now, currently, we are pointing to a uh, local API right this is when we run our emulator and we are in development mode so we need to um, now update our API instance to point to our live API so I'm just gonna paste the URL that I just copied from our Firebase function I'm gonna save that change okay so at this point we are ready to deploy our website uh, to Firebase hosting so we've switched our to our production API keys uh, we have updated our API instance. All we need to do now is deploy our website. Uh, so at the moment, we've only set up Firebase, our Firebase tools to deploy our Firebase function. We now need to come back into our terminal, right? And we don't need to be within our functions folder this time. We just need to be in our main project directory. And we need to configure our uh, Firebase uh, tools to actually deploy our website. So to do that, all we need to do is type in Firebase in it. When we do, we're going to get prompted with a bunch of different options, right? So we need to tell the CLI what it is we're trying to do. So what we need to do is we need to select configure and deploy Firebase hosting sites. So to select it, we just hit space and it should select it in green. And then we can just hit on enter, right? So that then asks us a few questions. So the first thing it says is, what do you want to use as your public directory? Uh, by default, this is going to be set to public. So what I can tell you is, of course, we're using Create React App. And of course, that will output a, a, a build folder. So we actually need to type in here build because it is going to be our build folder. OK, so the next question that it's asking is if we want to uh, configure this as a single page app so create react app is a single page app so we're just going to say yes now what sometimes happens when you initially configure your firebase hosting is that it will overwrite your build folder so if i actually expand this build folder you'll see that whereas before i had my entire build now uh, firebase the firebase cli has overwritten the build folder and i just have this index html now, this is not a problem. Uh, this entire folder, this build, is automatically generated. So all I have to do is run another build, and this will never occur again, right? So it's completely set up from this point onwards. But just to show you what Firebase has actually done, 
If I was to deploy this now, this is what I would deploy. I'm just seeing a HTML file that the Firebase CLI automatically generated when um, I configured my Firebase hosting and connected it with my application. So to fix this, to deploy my website, all I have to do is come back over to uh, VS Code, open, open up a new terminal window, um, and within my project's root directory, I'm just going to run another build. So I'm just going to say npm run build. And this is just going to take a few seconds. It's just going to be create React app. Um, it's just going to create another production build. And I recommend that you run a build every single time you want to deploy your application, just to ensure that you deploy the very latest version of your website every time. But now that we have run that build, if I expand and show you, we have our entire build now within our build folder. To deploy this, all I have to do is just type in Firebase deploy. And when I hit enter, it's going to go ahead and deploy both. Uh, it's actually going to deploy both my website and my Firebase function, right? So it's going to actually go ahead and deploy both. And that's it. So our site is now live. We successfully deployed to production. And you can easily see it uh, at the bottom of the terminal. You'll see here that it's telling us our hosting URL. So I can just click on that. And as you can see, uh, our website is now deployed live on the web. So I can visit this, as I said. I can uh, browse around the site. I can visit one of the products. I can add an item to my cart. I can adjust the cart. I can remove items. I can sign in. Um, as I said, the site has successfully uh, been deployed to the web. Now, I also want to point out here that if you come back over to your Firebase console and you go into your hosting tab uh, and you look at the dashboard here, you're going to see not only the information about your domain from Firebase, but if you actually have your own domain name that you've purchased, let's say, I don't know, simpletut.com, you can add your custom domain name here, which is basically going to point your name servers at your Firebase hosting so that you can actually have uh, your Firebase website um, under your own custom domain name. Um, I also want to note here that you can also roll back to previous versions and deployments. And you can also come and check out the usage tab here, which is just going to give you some interesting uh, insights into how your website is being used, how it's performing, uh, and those interesting uh, kinds of uh, metrics. And that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. But before I sign off, uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And again, don't forget to turn on the notifications.